Archaeology was the only new secondary profession ever added to the game, and also was the final profession overall to be added to the game. It had many different parts to it, and today we'll be going over all of those. Archaeology is done by checking your map for shovel icons. Then traveling there, you'd be given an area where you'd search for artifacts, placing down a few tools to triangulate where the artifact is then looting fragments and keystones for that artifact. Fragments acted as a currency and could be stockpiled to transform into random rewards, while keystones were items that got placed in your bags and could be sold on the auction house. These keystones could be slotted into an artifact's progress to count for tons of bonus fragments. Upon completing an artifact, a random new one would be selected which could be worked on next. There was two types of rewards, the common, which were simply gray items which sold for a good amount of gold, and the rare items, these items took many more fragments to craft, but they can also only be found once each. These rare finds ranged quite a bit on what they could be. There was pets, toys, mounts, and gear, and the gear was luckily bind on account, so you could trade with your alts who you needed the most. And some of this stuff was even decent, even competing with early raid gear. Also with the launch of archaeology, dwarves got a new racial to work with it, explore, which increased the amount of fragments they found and increased the cast speed of their survey ability. Sadly, dwarves can't be druids, or else druid dwarf would have been the optimal archaeology combo. Now, there was different types of artifacts, of course, found in different zones and different continents, so let's go over them and their rare items. In vanilla, the continents of the eastern kingdoms in Kalimdor, there was the dwarves, which had the innkeeper's daughter, the chalice of the mountain kings, the clockwork gnome, and the staff of the sorcerer Thane Therosane. Fossils, which had the Ancient Amber, Pterodax Hatchling, Fossilized Hatchling, Fossilized Raptor, and the Extinct Turtle Shell. Night Elf, which had the Bones of Transformation, Wisp Amulet, Kaldorai Wind Chimes, Highborn Soul Mirror, Druid and Priest Statue Set, Queen Ajara's Dressing Gown, and Taranda's Favorite Doll. And the Trolls, which had the Haunted War Drum, Voodoo Figurine, and Zincroc Destroy of Worlds, and was a pretty decent sword at the time. After leveling the vanilla zones for a bit, they could then move on to the Burning Crusade in Outlands with only two types of artifacts, with sadly much less rewards. The Orc with the headdress of the first shaman, and the Drenai with the last relics of Argus and the arrival of the Naru. Then the player could go to Northren with Wrath of the Lich King and get the Vikral artifacts. The Vikral Drinking Horn, Niffler Bearded Axe, the Nerubian Puzzle Box of yogg and the Blessing of the Old God. The Puzzle Box of yogg ended up being probably one of the most memorable items that come out of archaeology and has actually been important to the lore many times over the year with its random whispers about old god plot points. Then, finally catching up to the expansion it was introduced with, Cataclysm, which only had one single type under its belt, which could only be found in Uldum. Sadly, the amount of dig sites per continent was limited, and the new ones would not appear until you did the previous ones. So, to get Tolvir fragments, you needed to do Kalimdor dig sites for the other types, and then on completion, hope that the replacement would appear in Uldum. These rewards were the Pendant of the Scarab Storm, the Scimitar of Sirocco, the Ring of the Boy Emperor, the Staff of Amanie, the Scepter of the Ajdakir, the Crawling Claw, and the Canopic Jar. And the Canopic Jar was actually a common item, but it was special, as the item was white quality and could then be opened and contained greys. However, inside was a chance for it to have a recipe for the Vile of the Sands, a crafting recipe for alchemists to make a two-person flying mount that could be sold in the auction house. And this was probably the most valuable thing to come out of archaeology. Before we move on to the next expansion, there is one thing archaeology could do. See, in Cataclysm, dungeons were made a fair bit harder than their past selves. And because of this, Blizzard had a bonus effect at the start of dungeons that parties could activate to make the dungeons easier to clear. However, these could only be activated by an expert archaeologist using a keystone. Although in the later dungeons added in Cataclysm, this was abandoned for some reason and then never showed up again. Mists of Pandaria introduced a few new changes. First off, any common find you obtained could be sold for gold, or converted into restored artifacts. These boxes could be traded into a vendor for a few things. First, they could be exchanged for boxes of specific archaeology types. Let's say a crate of Dwarven artifacts or Tolvir artifacts. You can then open them up for some artifact fragments and possibly a keystone. This allowed you to do Pandaria archaeology while still getting some passive old world artifacts. This is something they would keep doing for every expansion afterwards. However, always making sure boxes were only sold for the past expansion's types, never the current. The next thing you could buy were a few consumables, which included the Lorewalker's Lodestone, which when used teleported you to a random dig site in Pandaria, skipping all the annoying travel time. Another item was the Lorewalker's Map, which when used randomized the current dig sites in Pandaria, meaning if you did not like the locations, you did not have to do them. 
at a cost at least. And at last, the Mantid Artifact Hunter Kit. This item contained two items, a Lore Walker's map, as mentioned above, and the Mantid Artifact Sonic Locator, an item that stayed in your bags for 24 real hours. And while on your person, any new dig sites would only be Mantid dig sites. So you would get it, use the map, then for the next 24 hours, you could easily find Mantid dig sites. Although it was a bit odd, as there weren't any other kinds for the other dig sites in Pandaria. Although there was an exploit with this item for a while, if you had it on your person and went to an old world zone like Kalimdor, every time you changed zones it would reset all the dig sites on the map. So what some players did is use this by going to Uldum, going to the edge of the map, then entering and exiting the zone until an Uldum dig site appeared. And then use this to get as many Uldum dig sites as they wanted, as they were quite rare, and had really good rewards like the Ultramarine Battle Tank and the Canopic Jar which were quite sought after. The next big thing was that upon completing a common find, it could sometimes give you a pristine version. These pristine versions could then be placed within a small questing hub and would grant the player a restored artifact and some keystones, as well as letting you display the items for only you to see, even have an achievement if you got them all. Although one final thing to note is upon looting a Mogu artifact, you had a chance at a Mogu spirit that once killed would drop a ton of Mogu artifacts. A fun little unique thing that gave a bonus amount of artifact fragments. Then moving on to Warlords of Draenor, we didn't get anything new or unique added. A little fun thing was across the spires of Arrak zone, there was jumping puzzles that had hidden chests that gave Arakoa fragments, and some archaeology skill points, although it made much easier once flying came out. We still have the map and lodestones from Pandaria, but just new Draenor versions. Although nothing like the Mantid Sonic locator. You could now buy Pandaren, Mogu, and Mantid crates using restored artifacts, as Mr. Pandaria became past expansion content and now qualified for this. Also, the Mogu's chance to spawn a spirit that gave bonus fragments was added to all types in World of Draenor. Now, meaning every time you found an artifact, you had a chance to get a bonus fragment and key. And well, this is it for World of Draenor. The only other real change being that World of Draenor's dig sites allowed you to find 8 artifacts instead of 6, like all the other continents. Next, onto Legion, the biggest expansion for changes to archaeology. First off, while past zones were limited to 4 dig sites per continent, you were limited to 3 on the Broken Isles. Next, it was changed that when you reach the right area where an artifact is hidden, a shovel will appear above your head, making it much easier to pinpoint the exact location. Then, dig sites were made a lot more compact, meaning much less running around, and also far fewer commons to find. So it was now much easier to collect all the pristines, and lastly, rare items were reworked. While we still have the types of artifacts being Demonic, Highborn, and High Mountain Torrin, they themselves had no actual rares you could find, only being able to find commons and pristines. Instead, we now had a questing system, a rotating quest found at the quest giver in Dalaran's archaeology building. This was a quest that changed every two weeks and rotated through a large list of items that you had to go do various archaeology things for from gathering fragments to exploring and killing mobs. And there were a lot of really good items you could get from this, with the standouts being the Spirit of Etero Mount, which is a ghostly moose mount. This really changed how rares work, as other than trying to get pristines, there was no real reason to just go out and do archaeology, instead just waiting for these specific quests to appear. But the specific rewards were really good, so I guess it kind of evened out. Then in patch 7.2, they made a couple more additions. First off, they added the chance to get artifact power upon digging, and also added elite dig sites. These sites, which already existed, but had no benefits before, are located in set areas with a whole bunch of elite mobs, marked with a golden shovel. These locations had a higher chance of getting keystones and artifact power from digging. Although in the very next expansion of Battle for Azeroth, we once again return to the old rare system. Seemingly, the weekly quest thing did not work out very well in Legion. But there is one more thing that did get changed with BFA, and that is more something that affected all professions and not just archaeology. See, before BFA, when you trained a new skill, you needed to go expansion by expansion, increasing the skill in that profession. So if you were in Legion, you needed to go back and train in Vanilla, then TBC, then Wrath of the Lich King, then Kata, then Moth, then Wad. Then you could start Legion professions. Although from Mista Pandaria and after, they did add ways to catch up, but it wasn't great. Like with mining, you could start with Legion, but until you got all the way to Legion mining levels, you would only get nuggets instead of ore. But with BFA, they split up all of the professions to the respective expansions, meaning you could level only the new expansion's levels, or do the past ones in any order. But with archaeology, they did not change this. 
you still have the old system. However, the catch-up system was simple. You could do any, at any level, and digging and solving would simply give you skill points, no matter which expansion you were doing. And really, that's it. BFA didn't really add much more for archaeology. A hint at what was to come, as with Shadowlands, archaeology got nothing new. No new levels, no new rewards, nothing. While it may in a future patches, as referenced by a brokerage game, it very well may not, and may simply be gone until the next expansion, or maybe even never get new content again. At least it's unlikely it will ever be outright removed like First Aid was, as the profession has a little to no effect on actual player power. 